the opposition, the golden oldies, one to be. The love gurus themselves, Joe Saffron Healy, TJ Eris Mars, and Matt Cupid O'Keefe. Now, these gentlemen have been uh, in the shadows of this hotel having a few tete a and uh, they've assured me that they're going to play very fairly and there's going to be no undercutting and no mean punches, especially Matt. All the way into the Rebel County, he has to behave himself. I promise, I promise. So, without further ado, to open this evening's speech, we're going to have a three minute speech. I'm going to give him a two minute warning. Uh, call on Pluto himself to get us going. <laughs> Romantic Ireland is dead and gone, it's with O'Leary in the grave. The opening lines of the poem called September 1913 by a little known poet called W.B. Yeats from Sligo. Ladies and gentlemen, I will focus upon this poem where Yeats' passion for politics and in particular his love for Ireland, Irishness and all things national. However, I will not. But instead focus on the true meaning of a romantic Ireland and show you all in no uncertain terms that it is, untrue, it is truly dead and buried. I would like to introduce you to my teammates tonight. Our next speaker is a somewhat shy and reserved young man who married his darling Marie nearly three years ago. Now this is the same Marie who is the current rally chair, which will no doubt lead to us getting bonus points for his contribution. <laughs> now James Darwin will be based upon the whole world of social media has played in our lives, where we seem to be swiping left and swiping left, and the whole area of where we focus upon the saints and scholars, and how our past is certainly in the past. And our final speaker is a gentleman who lacks a lot of confidence. Rarely, if ever, speaks in public. And just because Michael is married to tonight's chair, should clearly be seen as a major advantage to the opposition. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that Catherine would take great comfort and solace in tonight's proposition, being well and truly schooled and learned and humiliated by our colleagues across the table. Michael will focus on, well, that's a secret, but Michael doesn't know yet what he's going to focus on. <laughs> now, our good friends in the opposition, ladies and gentlemen, are going to try to convince you that romance is alive in Ireland. They will try to confuse you with fake news, and indeed will probably refer to this great institution and all it has achieved. But ladies and gentlemen, do not be fooled by their contributions. Remember, you cannot make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I want to spend the next few moments proving to you all that romantic Ireland is dead and gone, and is therefore important to define tonight's motion correctly. And according to the Oxford English Dictionary, tonight's motion can be quite simply defined as that romantic Ireland is dead and gone. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there is no ambiguity around tonight's motion. Indeed, like the opposition, is quite simple and straightforward. Now, I want to bring you back in time on the journey and show you the real romantic Ireland, and you will be left in no doubt that this motion must be carried. And I think what better way to start by giving you an example that captures romantic Ireland. Ireland could have been seen on the TV screens and cinemas in the past. We are happy to have just two TV channels. And when you went to the cinema, there was always a clamour for the double seat in the back row. Who here remembers those classics? The Field, The Snapper, The Commitments, and legendary TV shows such as Glen Row, Thank You Chair, such as Glen Row, Live at Tree, School Around the Corner, and Bosco. <laughs> and what do we all have to show for in 2019? Hundreds of channels with nothing on. Classics like Fair City, Peppa Pig and Mrs. Brown's boys. Is this really what the men of 1916 fought for? Chairman, I'm nearly finished. Let us move into a different area.
for the opposition. Mr. Sacrum said, Joe Higley.
Joe said he went to Matt, but I'd like to ask Margaret, Barbara, and Rita, what is the most romantic thing those three boys over there have done for you in the last 40 years? You've only got two minutes. <laughs> no, the reason I, the reason I, I had to come here tonight is because Joe mentioned this room and this event. I looked out on the dance floor last night and I didn't see much poetry being used by the young gentlemen trying to woo the objects of their affections. No, Ireland is known as the land of saints and scholars and we've been producing great literary heavyweights for decades, for centuries. Beckett to Boland, Kavanagh to Heaney, the monks, but in particular, the inspiration behind tonight's motion, William Butler Yeats. But, what is it all for now? Arts and culture have taken a back seat to Love Island. Jesus, the reason Catherine was watching it was because he was out in the cattle. Do you think he, that's romance, is it? <laughs> and how are people connecting these days? <laughs> People are connecting through the phone. So whether it's, uh, and it's no longer, you know, wooing a lady, plucking up the courage to ask her out, taking that lead so that you can take her courting. And that doing a line means a completely different thing these days. <laughs> but, but, nowadays, it's giving her a poke. On, on Facebook, on Facebook. <laughs> on Tinder. It's swiping right as often as you can. Swipe them all, swipe them all, and eventually one will stick. And or so, so I'm told. So I'm told. Um, because look. No, because of all people, I certainly wasn't reciting poetry when I made what was definitely one of the least romantic marriage proposals on record, but for my own safety, she's only down there, that's where that story is going to end. But, look lads, romantic, as old as you are, romantic Ireland is dead since 1913, and unless it's come out of the grave like a zombie, and whatever sort of zombie romance you have over there, I think there's only one thing we can say tonight, and that's that romantic Ireland is dead and gone. Opposition. Madam Chairperson, pleasure to stand before you to oppose the sad notion that all of you just appear here without a notion of romance in your body. Now I would dare say if we were here last night, there was a little bit more romance as well, but a little bit more activity. And, for, and, and just for James' information, James, it's always been my view in Makra that dance is the, is the rhythm of romance. Poetry might have worked in, in Yates' time, but I suspect last night there was a little bit more rhythm. And hopefully as the night progressed, it continues. As an organization, as an organization, I'm sure you'd all agree, and as we mark the 75th anniversary, the notion of Makra was built on the very basis of romance. That a group of young men, men, as it was at the time, unfortunately, were going to work, travel, and learn together. But they quickly discovered, without the women, they were on a road to nowhere. And 75 years later, with much romance, I'm sure you'd all agree, you have been a wonderful success, because you certainly multiplied. <laughs> There was a brief comment there earlier from our opposition that uh, Michael wasn't sure of where his focus was. But I have to say, Michael, I have to admire your focus, because after all, I thought you did a wonderful job bringing our chairperson to your love list in Tipperary. And I congratulate you on your occasion, bringing us back to Tipperary. I don't know what a wonderful opportunity, <laughs> and wonderfully well done. <laughs> and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as a country, we sometimes underestimate the value of our organisations, not just mock. But not take the GA, for instance, up and down this country. 
and I talked today in Matt's home county of Kilkenny. It was a wonderful indication of what real romance was in many ways. When people who came together uh, and in a local parish after a sad bereavement to come together and unite in victory. And that is, after all, what we all aim for, to take the dance, to dance it through and make it to the finish. I would also like to say, and he asked us what is the most romantic thing we ever did in our wives. Is there anything more romantic as a farmer with your spouse on a beautiful, soft, shitty marriage day? <laughs> Advising your nearest and dearest to take the black one out of the herd of a hundred black and white Frisian cows. <laughs> and, our, and our brief inquiry is to know which blank F1 are we talking about. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is no doubt that our future of romance is alive and well. And I see here before me tonight the product of a greater generations to come. I thank you dearly for your presence and I hope you will join us in, in, in opposing and the final speaker for the proposition, uh, Michael Gold. misguided opposition. <laughs> they have called into question my romantic stance. <laughs> These murdered gentlemen over here. We never said a word about it. <laughs> <laughs> to TJ is your own teammate. They have said that I was a great romantic and I brought my beloved wife up <laughs> to Tipperary. <laughs> Unfortunately for TJ, or luckily for me, I'm not in Tipperary, but awfully. <laughs> now, I think it is better this room where there's only one thing to do. Oh, James the alluded the to the fact. Be chair, okay, I'll sit down, my chief. <laughs> James <laughs> alluded to the fact. <laughs> James alluded to the fact that he was going to mention his proposal, who was slightly afraid of it. And that's what you refer to as the three year scare tactic that the wife still controls. I'm slightly longer married. So to dispel this romantic nature that I have, and seen as what they think is romantic, I'm going to talk about my wedding proposal. <laughs> it's as near as I have come to being romantic. <laughs> I have now the chairperson objects to that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dr. Farmer, the late, great Joe Ray. And when things got tough, a great saying of Joe's was, the gloves have to come off. Well, the gloves are off now, <laughs> Madam Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> you maintain your impartiality because I know the truth. What was it that threw them together in the great embrace of life, Michael and Catherine? Was it the size of his it's the more vintage. In the size of his, of his tractor, tractor, tractor. Well, I don't think so. Perhaps the size of his equipment <laughs> or the ring feeder. I know the truth of it. It was love and romance. And if that was wheeling that wrong feeder down the road, then that's romance too. Now I'm a bit I'm a bit soft on the knee because uh, I, I'm like the census figures. I'm broken down by age, sex, and religion. <laughs> well, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> but speaking of sex, do you know that the Irish population has the highest birth rate, not only in Europe but in the Western world today? Now, if that's not love and romance put to some useful purpose. Then I would concede the motion, but I will not have it because do. of the truth. The reality, Madam Chairperson, is that romance and romantic Ireland are alive and here tonight. Where, I may ask you, did the appropriately named Pluto Jago <laughs> get his rather discreet poetry from? You read the poem from 1913. It's all with O'Leary and the bread. He forgot that WB changed his mind in 1916 and said, All changed, changed utterly. A terrible <laughs> beauty is born. We have to use the entire figure if we're going to use any of them. Love Island has come up time and again on both sides. It's great to see the one argument being used for, to, to contradictory purpose. Sure, it's not Love Island. We're all in love with Love Island. It's Love Ireland. I'm telling you, we're acting it out. Oh yes, and, and Love Island, of course. You know, I have to admit a certain amount of envy. Looking at the women mainly, because that'd be my forte. But looking at the men, <laughs> <laughs> so clearly turn your head. Down. I must confess, where I haven't even got place. <laughs> the second speaker for the opposition, James, has a heavy heart. Well, men will never have a broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Marie will look after that. <laughs> and then he, he mentioned uh, 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 his wedding proposal. Do you know what? It sounds very, very, very romantic altogether. Listen, no matter what way you go about it, lads, as long as it produces the goods, that's all you need to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> proposal is so you accept no romance is gone. The third speaker, the third speaker for the opposition. Yes, ma'am. Did <laughs> try hard and long to intimidate me, and it didn't work. Because I know from long experience I take this that the wish <laughs> of that the wish of a leash, man, well half of it anyway, <laughs> is of little purpose when you're proposing that motion. Ladies and gentlemen, support me. Romantic Ireland is alive and here tonight. Enjoy the weekend. And also, ladies and gentlemen, hope you've been paying attention, because this is now her thought in your hands, who we uh, think deserves to be the winner of tonight's motion. So the adjudicators of this fine um, audience result is going to be the ever-present Jerry Murphy. Have it on reliable authority, he's got his uh, scrutineers hat on. Held by the elder statesmen of Markra, Hugh Ryan, and Sean Eustace. And Dennis Duggan is standing there at the back to help you evacuate should you call the wrong decision. So I would like to cash, didn't you? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you think that the proposition did a wonderful job this evening, and the images time on our island and that really went well over. In proposing the motion that romantic Ireland is dead and gone, please show your appreciation and the results in their direction. So for those who believe that uh, the proposition on tonight, you can give them a round of applause or any noisy Dean suitable. <laughs>
If, however, if, however, you think that the opposition were more successful in proving their argument, please show your their appreciation. <laughs> for extending the opportunity to partake in this 75th anniversary celebration and we hope you have a marvelous night and now I'm going to hand over to your MC for this evening, Uptra Markadama Kansa. Thank you very much. I think after that you'll all be very grateful to hear that I'm going to be only MC and not speaking tonight. Uh, for two reasons. And one, because someone asked me why was I not standing up here. Uh, there's two very simple reasons. One, I have the experience as a president of all of the incredible people who are up here and in the room. And also I may have the experience in romantic matters as much as any of them. <laughs> on that, I'm going to move on. I'm going to introduce our first speaker tonight, uh, Marie, on behalf of the Rally Committee. And I think before she stands up, I think I want to give it, see everyone give a massive cheer for the Rally Committee, all the work that they've done here today. That's an absolutely incredible, absolutely amazing. And one last round of applause for everybody, uh, as Marie is talking up, everybody who uh, was part of the great debate tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 